Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor and welcome to another painting. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor and welcome to another painting demo. Today I want to share with you the process of this painting of Lakeside in Kirkland, Washington. This is not actually the first time I painted this photo. I took this photo maybe two years ago. But about two weeks ago, a nice lady ordered this painting. And I realized that I threw that old painting away, but I didn't took it down from my website. So she ordered a painting and I asked her if I can just paint another one for her. She said yes, so here we are. So I already did a very rough drawing and I put some masking fluid for the distant mast on the boat. And I start to pre-wet the sky because I want to have that nice, beautiful blue sky with some clouds. And I also want to paint some color of the light right off the bat. The tricky part for this painting is that although it looks quite simple, there's a lot of details compressed in the distance because there's so many houses and boats and stuff. So it's very important that we try to simplify as much as possible in the distance so we don't lose that depth. So now I'm doing the first wash for the sky after I paint the color of the light on the building. The sky is still quite moist, so when I put down a wash, it's going to have some very soft effect. And I leave out some white just so that I can paint some nice cloud in the sky. I made the cloud bigger this time in my painting just so that I can make it feel a little bit more dramatic and I can also feel the space a little bit better. Otherwise, we'll have some awkward empty space in the sky. So I try to do it everything in one go. So after I leave out some of the white space for the cloud, I paint the shadow, the dark side of the cloud, wet onto wet. I reinforce the sky, the blue of the sky a little bit in the top just to make it a little bit darker. And I start to give it just a tiny little bit of details on the cloud. And before it is completely dry, I paint some distant clouds that's closer to the horizon. They're smaller. They're flatter just to push that depth a little bit more to push that aerial perspective. And here I try to add just a little bit more dark detail on the cloud. It's very tempting to do more, but at this point you need to stop and let watercolor settle down and let it dry. A huge part of painting a successful watercolor is to know when to stop. It's almost like you need to respect watercolor. If it's starting to dry, you need to let it dry. If it's starting to dry and you continue to work on it, eventually you're going to ruin the wash that you already have. So I continue to wash down and start to paint the water, the water surface. And as I come down, I increase the color a little bit, have a little bit more intense mixture. So the color feels deeper as it comes forward. And now I'm trying to paint a little bit of reflection, the reflection of the light. Actually, we can always come back in and paint the darker reflection later. But right now I'm trying to paint the color of the light. And before the wash is dry, I paint some very soft ripples just to kind of give this water a little bit of movement, a little bit sense of movement. So you want to pay attention to the perspective here as well. The ripple is longer in the foreground and as it goes into the distance, it gets smaller. Now I mix a cooler gray for the distant hill. And I want to keep that simple, even though there's a lot of details because there are thousands of pine trees in the distant hills, you don't have to paint every single one of them. A general rule of thumb is to make the distant elements less detail, less contrast and leave the detail and the contrast for the middle ground or even the foreground element, wherever you want your viewer to focus on. It's very interesting. The viewer usually is a direct feedback to what you do in the painting, even though they are not watching you paint. But the longer you spend your time painting something, the longer the viewers are going to look at that. The more detail, the more contrast you make something, that's usually going to draw the eyes of viewers. So if you do want to have some details in the distance, do perceived details. So you see me leaving out random highlights in the distance. Those can be perceived as boat, as buildings, or as some sort of structures. 
So like the master Joseph Spukvich always said, indicate, don't state. So I'm connecting that distant hills into the foreground. And I change the color in between because there are some trees and I want to have some warm lights on the trees. And those warm lights are not very, very bright. Even though the sunlight did hit them, the tree itself is actually pretty dark. So that's why it's warm, it's a little bit lighter, but it's not that light. So still in the middle value. Connect that to some other pine trees in the middle ground. Those are much taller with slightly more details. So even though this one is not really heavy on perspective because everything is pretty far away, you can still tell the distance by looking at a distant hill, how those trees are just tiny little details. And as it pulls forward, you start to see the tree in bigger shapes, slightly more detail and slightly more color contrast. So after we're done with the trees, I start to paint the building. So we want to preserve the light, so I'm not going to paint the light side of the building. Rather, I am painting the middle value, the dark side of the building. And as soon as we have the contrast, we start to see structure and form. And this is also the part that I slow down just a little bit to really define the structure of the buildings. And I also use a synthetic brush. This brush is Escoda Perla. The hair on this brush is pretty snappy, so it's very useful to paint hard surface. And I connect that shape down and paint some bushes, some grass. And we continue to define the structure of the buildings. This is a tricky part because as you look into the photos, look for the details, it's almost like a rabbit hole that you can fall in and get stuck in it. So I have to constantly remind myself that I need to step back a little bit, squint my eyes a little bit and focus on the overall read of the painting. That's why whenever you find yourself going autopilot, that's a very dangerous sign because you stop making conscious decisions about your painting. And while there are times that you want to let your emotion or your intuition to take over, you want to do your best to make every single brushstroke, every single color use intentional. Happy accidents do happen, but you cannot rely on those to create your painting. So I'm starting to paint the distant elements, smaller house, the gangway and some other trees. And I am not matching the photo one to one. The photos actually has more house, some more boat and some more tiny little details. But I know if I'm trying to copy every single one of them, it's going to be very, very tedious and tiring for me. So I just try to interpret the detail with visual language. Just be conscious about the shape that you paint. They're smaller, they're shorter. And also think about the perspective a little bit. If you're painting like a street scenery, you want them to be a little bit higher, closer to the horizon line. So I'm painting some dark details. Those are the rooftop. Those are the fences, whatever those are. As long as these details in context looks like houses, I'm good. Now I'm starting to paint the reflection. This time I'm doing a little bit harder reflection as opposed to my last painting, painting soft reflections. This has a little bit more ripples, so it feels like the water is moving. So this introduces a little bit more movement in your painting. But the same thing, you have to be conscious about the shape of the reflection. First, it should reflect what's above the water. And second, you want to have closer smaller reflection ripples in the distance. And as it comes down, you want to start to break it apart a little bit more and a little bit bigger. So it conveys the distance and the depth of the water. And as I paint the reflection, I also try to do a little bit of wet onto wet in it so it can have slight color change in the reflection. And now just some tiny little detail on the gangway some wooden poles underneath. 
and I paint the reflection of the trees in distant houses. These ripples are fun to paint, but again, you want to be conscious about how many ripples you actually are going to paint. If you paint too many of them, it can get busy very quickly. So prevent yourself from overworking is always something that you want to work on when doing watercolor especially. And that is something I still struggle with from time to time. There are paintings that I clearly overwork that I should have stopped when I just starting to like it. And including this one, I still feel like the ripple, I can get a little bit carried away when I'm painting those. So I have to remind myself to stop when I'm starting to like it. I'm adding the dark to the buildings in the middle. The local color of that building is a little bit darker. That's why the light part of the building is actually the middle value. That also serves a nice visual break as well, so you don't have light, dark, light, dark all the way through. Just a few more dark details. Some trees, some windows, some chimneys. It's getting very impressionistic, actually. So the person who bought the painting, she told me that Kirkland Lakeside gives her a lot of good memories because she remembers she's walking down to the beach with her husband. And when I heard that, I felt really touched because that's exactly what I want to offer people with my painting. As much as I want people to enjoy my painting because they think it looks nice, it's far more important for me that the painting serves as a connection between the viewer and their precious and happy memories. So even though this may just be a very typical lake scenery, it might mean something special for the viewer and the person who purchased the painting. Just a tiny little bit more details in the distance. And here I add some shadows underneath the gangway. Water is a surface, so it does get light and shadow. Here I'm adding a little bit more detail for the reflection and some bluer reflection because it does reflecting the darker blue sky in the top. So I want to add a little bit more sharper reflection of the blue sky as well. And again, try not to overdo it. A few more dark details on the top of the building, reinforce some light and shadow, and we are finished. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe for more. And I certainly hope the person who received this painting will enjoy this painting and always reminds her of the good memory she has. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. And I will see you again next time.